Oh, say can you stream? That's as far as I got. Hi, YouTube. I'm back. Miss Vivian Frost, your bestie who's a vestie, sporting my 4th of July couture minus this accessory. When your hair's big and your hat's small, you do what you got. I promise that's just temporary. So, anyway, just for a, a few minutes of footage. Anyway, I'm back with my usual, gotta find it again, top 10 best diet list, and to be thematically accurate, we're gonna go with 4th of July movies. Oh, and also, I figured this shit out earlier today, when I can find it. There's other live chat from Twitch, so if you want to interact and talk live while I do these fucking stupid things, go to Twitch, follow me on there, Vivian underscore Frost, all that fun stuff. We can chat while this is going on, and then you get the before and the after. So, you have the replay here, filmed live, repost, or not reposted, but posted immediately after, and you got all the live stuff on Twitch, and then the after hour stuff, the other site. But anyway, so tonight we're going to be talking about what I like, my unconventional, as is my hobbies, idea of my favorite or my top 10 movies to watch for the 4th of July, and one prequel. But we'll get that in just a second. Let me enjoy this Moscow Mule. Yeah, so anyway, uh, again, no particular order, except actually this first one is kind of in an order. So let me expand this menu because I'm live producing while dressed with people popping fireworks in my driveway right now. On the 3rd, the 4th is tomorrow, or at least in an hour and a half my time. So anyway, what I consider my top 10 4th of July movies. Now, my criteria is if 4th of July figures into the movie in some point, at some point, either as the day we fight back, wink, wink, or whatever. Oh, but if there's an important or key story point that involves the fourth, it's included. It's fair game for my suggestions. So, number 10, and this is like a prequel. It's kind of a cheat, but it's not. Actually, just got through watching it a couple uh, minutes ago before I started streaming, but it's Return of the Living Dead. Fourth of July, what the fuck, Viv? It takes place on July 3rd. And technically, it goes into the next day, barely. For July 4th, when all the real fireworks happen at the end of the movie. And if you've seen it, you know what I mean. Wink, wink, wah, wah. Uh, so, yeah. Return of the Living Dead. Again, hot take. Hot take. But again, I, this is sort of like a prequel movie, because you should be watching it tonight. So, you, a little bit late on this one, but you can catch it next year. Or catch up tomorrow, because it's a good fucking movie. Uh, moving on up, number nine, The Sandlot because I don't like to be too, too serious on here because, as you can see, but the 4th of July scene in this film is the sappiest moment you'll ever see on this channel. Or the, this is the sappiest thing we'll ever talk about. But they only play the one night game a year because they do it on the 4th of July because of the fireworks they can see. I'm overclimbed. Anyway, fantastic movie, fun movie, good one for the kiddies. Return of the Living Dead, previous one. You watch that one. You, you, know, you put this one on for the kids. They fall asleep watching it. Bring them up to bed. Then you put on Return of the Living Dead. Moving on to number eight. Fuck yes. Permission granted Ghost Rider. Fly by any time. But yeah, you know, Fourth of July, all these, you know, it's, it's about patriotism for this fucked up country we live in. Uh, no matter what side you're on, there's there's so much fucked up shit going on right now. So, patriotism of the idea of America, that was never great, in my opinion. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so Top Gun, if you're a 40-year-old transvestite like me, you've seen this movie a million times, a thousand times. Your wife probably likes to watch the volleyball scene over and over. But anyway, yeah, 
If you're going to watch a patriotic movie, Tony Scott's Top Gun. Pete Cruz, well, in terms of his, like, not taken seriously phase, his early years, peak early Cruz. Although, Risky Business was before this. Anyway, what the fuck ever. Watch Top Gun. It's fucking awesome. And the sequel should have been out by now, but because of this fucking virus, God knows when we'll get to see uh, Top Gun 2, Top Gunner, whatever. I don't think it has a subtitle. Maybe it does. I don't remember. It's been so fucking long. Number seven, Hot Take, Silver Bullet. Another horror movie. People say there's no you know, Independence Day horror movies. Well, there's Uncle Sam. Some of the purges, I guess you could say. But yeah, anyway, Return of the Living Dead on the third. Now, of course, uh, Silver Bullet, uh, with the, before his motorcycle accident, Gary Busey, and uh, based on the Stephen King book, and then, um, or not, comic book, novella, what, I don't know what, it's not really a novel, I guess. Uh, it's not a graphic novel either, though, so whatever. But the work by Stephen King, Silver Bullet, a very important part happens on July 4th because little Corey Haim goes outside to pop fireworks and hits a werewolf in the fucking eye with a bottle rocket. That's how they figure out who the werewolf is. Spoiler alert. But you don't know who the werewolf is until you see it. So that's just, I, I spoiled how they figure it out, not who the werewolf is. It's definitely not predictable. Yeah, but anyway, 4th of July scene, key plot point, counts for my list. Silver bullet, number seven. Number six, historically poignant and a very heart wrenching movie, but in a more, a much more different way than the Sandlot earlier. But it's Glory with Denzel, Morgan Freeman, uh, Ferris Bueller. Fantastic film. Edward Zick directed this, Zwick, something like that. But he also did The Killing Fields in the 80s, which is a really good movie. And then uh, Last Samurai with the previous film, Star Tom Cruise, and the title on that as well, being the white savior for the Japanese. But anyway, Glory, fantastic film. Amazing performances all around. Uh, young Denzel. You know, technically not young, but young. That's how we all see him now, Morgan Freeman. Uh, you know, very good movie. Very good score, too, if you like movie scores like I do. It's really fucking good. So, yeah. Okay. Number five. Fuck yes. We got Cruz on here. We got uh, Corey Haim on here on this list. Tom Matthews to some. Tom Return of the Living Dead. And we have to have fucking Swayze. And Jennifer Grey in a pre- uh, Dirty Dancing film. Actually, uh, this, this, was, this was before Dirty Dancing. Yeah, so, anyway, good times. And, you know, the you standing up fighting for what's right amidst an invasion of people who want to actually disrupt our way of life and take away more of our freedom. I haven't heard that story before, or not living it right now in 2020. Red fucking dawn. A fucking made amazing. Sorry. And don't forget, Red Dawn... Wolverines! And not the comic character. That's really fucking cheesy. It's because I'm fucking high. And drunk. But anyway. Move. Oh, whoops. Click that OBS. Live producing while you're in an altered state. And looking ridiculous. Number four. Now. I hope I said this earlier, but I don't remember. But fireworks count. And you know. If I, you know this is a film about independence about fighting your oppressors, rising up against an, a corrupt government that you're under. And it ends with fireworks. So, if you really want a movie that encompasses the theme of Independence Day, be for Vendetta. And fucking, I still think it should have been Keira Knightley and not Natalie Portman, but what the fuck do I know? I'm going to on fucking YouTube and Twitch. So yeah, top three, y'all. Number three. da da just when you thought it was safe for a list not mentioning Jaws in the summer, you gotta list Jaws for this, partic this particular topic. Because, you know, that's the, one of the driving points of the movie that's July 4th when it all kind of comes to a head and they have to pay Quint to kill the shark and all that kind of fun stuff. Which leads us to, you know, the resolution of that film. So, but yeah, Key Point takes place on July 4th. It's the best goddamn shark movie ever made. It's one of the best movies ever fucking made. So, yeah, it should just be on a list anyway because it exists. Because it's fucking Jaws. So number two... Not number one? What the fuck? Yeah, I got this at number two. 
Independence Day. Why? If you've watched the top ten list about anything Fourth of July related to movies, you've already seen this a hundred fucking times. You actually don't need to watch it this year because it's on all. It's on every fucking countdown, no matter what. And it should be. My point is, don't need to spend any time on it. It's Independence Day. Uh, and hot take, but the sequel wasn't terrible. You know, come 20-something plus years after the original. But anyway, my pick for the best 4th of July movie, the best movie that represents the values of America and all the things that we hold dear as our country of incredibly diverse and fabulous people. But anyway... So, the movie that I think the best encompasses the ideals of America and can, you know, hits all the right moments for a 4th of July film, Team America, World Police. One of the greatest movies ever made with puppets. So, for sure. Also, one of the, you know, bar none, one of the funniest fucking films I've ever seen. The first time I saw the puking scene in this film, that was the closest I've ever been to death from laughing so fucking hard. So yeah, Team America, World Police, this Vesties, number one movie to watch for the 4th of July. Definitely not kid friendly. If you haven't seen it, if there's any, you know, I know there's some older dads here who's high schoolers off at a dance, or you know, hanging out or something, this is what you do with your private time. But, you know, trust me. I, don't, I lost completely what I was saying. Time to get off YouTube. Twitch, I'll be right back to you soon. If you like this, you know, uh, it should be popping up over here anytime now. Subscribe here. No, it'll actually, uh, by Twitch chat. Uh, you're still there. I'm just not showing you on YouTube. Uh, so yeah, you know, at some point, probably it's probably already here, my face, wearing the same wig actually. Um, subscribe. Watch this one. Look at the other ones. And that's the thing, too. Like, uh, I get some very beautiful comments. I've gotten no bad comments. And now that I said that, it's going to be a dime a fucking dozen. But anyway, you know, so I do appreciate them. But I also want to hear what suggestions everybody has. Because I'm, you know, I've been doing this for years. But then, like, I'm late to the fucking streaming train on sites that you can make a lot of money on to put them in perspective. Um, but anyway, you know, so, because in fact, like, I have so few thumbs down on my videos until, because I just said it, every video is going to have a million of them now. Uh, I'm just curious, why is it a thumbs down? Is it just a difference of opinion? You know, there's been some good discussion in some of the ones, my RuPaul's Drag Race one, which apparently, if I just did a RuPaul's Drag Race channel, I probably, you know, if I was looking for likes or views, I mean, that one has, that's the most viewed view. I have, like, double the highest one I ever had, so... You know, but I'm just I'm looking for like if there's a direction that's more valuable for my time or more entertaining, let me know. You know, good or bad. I want I want you know create create a constructive criticism. Is a not a finite a uh, unrenewable resource. I mean, you don't get a lot of it. You need you know you got to use what you get. So I love hearing that. I like hearing that. and I love hearing oh you're so pretty love your ears. Of course I love that. Duh. All you trolls stay away. But again, I've done jinxed it. I broke the spell that I had going for all that. But anyway. I'm starting to ramble, and I need to get back to Twitch. So, YouTube, like, subscribe, give me some feedback, and until next time, stay frosty.